show up at 10 seconds to go. Hello, and thank you for watching the 30th episode of That Show with Billy Wilson. Tonight we have joining us uh, the host of the social sports and entertainment show, Chris Yates. Hi there, we how you doing? Of the social sports and entertainment show, Chris Yates. Hi there, and how you doing? Uh, we also have somebody who has a player on. Kimberly, I think that's you. Hi there, hi there. You need to close uh, the player. Kimberly, I think that's you. Hi there, hi there. Looks like the sounds from Kimberly. Yeah. Right now. Yeah, so I, I am you here. And we, uh, did I say Claire yet? Cause yeah. I, I've been on, yeah, okay. We are, I couldn't hear you with the, with the echo, but hi, yeah. it's me. And we have um, the man behind Universe Today, uh, Fraser Crane. Uh, who has a website about astronomy and space, and he does Wait. a lot of great things on Google+, building communities, and he has a cat, yeah. as you can see right there. He has a cat. You, you booked me for your, uh, for your show with your cat, but, uh, but I guess wasn't able to make it, so I, so, I kept, so I brought the cat to this. Yeah, yeah and that's great. And uh, Tibby should be around, but he's a little sick today. And uh, we have Kimberly, but uh, she's away from the chair for the moment. But... I'll introduce her in a moment. And we have our musical guest, Paul Platt, who uh, will be uh, playing hey, some songs for us for the last 16 minutes of the show. So stay tuned for that. And we have Ronnie. Spencer. Hi. I think Billy might have frozen up. So what yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do is keep the show going because he was going to have me talk next. So <laughs> whether... <laughs> Whether you can see me in the middle or not, I'm just gonna kind of run with it. So, um, with it, Ronnie, Ronnie, I gotta be honest. Um, when I always saw your picture, and yep. this is weird, I thought you were Santa. I thought that yep. was a red. <laughs> I, I never noticed that it was a button. It was a button to play. I've and then heard finally, that. I was like, wait a minute, hey, you've heard that because yep. it has a Santa Claus look to it. <laughs> yeah. Well, really, what it is is I do a lot with video. And YouTube has a little arrow called the play arrow, and that's what that's right. supposed to be. It's the red play arrow. From, no, I know that now. Yeah. But when you see it right away, it looks like the little Santa Claus hat. Yeah, I've, I've been told that a few times. Okay. Hey, Billy, we were just running with it, but you're back now. Um, I don't know if I'm blue. Like you, sure, uh, sure. Video marketing and, and that for Google Plus and uh, YouTube. Yeah, I. Uh, my name is Ronnie Bincer. I do a lot of work with video online. I started actually with a realm called Video SEO or Search Engine Optimization using video. And when I came into Google Plus, I really liked the environment. Not only because of it's kind of a fun place to be, but because of all the search engine juice that it gives you. And I focus a lot on video, and because of that, a natural place for me to really pay a lot of attention to is Hangouts. So I'm known by many people as a Hangout helper. I help people make their Hangouts work. And I also talk a lot about what goes on with YouTube. And everyone, by default, is making videos when they're doing these Hangouts. And so a lot of people aren't quite sure what to do with them after the fact, and I try to help them with that. So that's one of the main things I do, and I think, Billy, if it's okay, I'll just keep going about the uh, discovery that's relatively new. Does that sound good? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Um, YouTube recently added in the ability for us to actually make a link on our videos that will let you jump right off of YouTube and land on your Google Plus page or your Google Plus profile. And that's kind of a neat thing, and I'm going to give you a visual as to how that might look. So I'm going to share my screen for a sec and bring up a video. So we got a little echo going on somewhere. Was it Kimberly again? So anyway, can you uh, see my screen now? I'll, I'll uh, loop box you. Okay. I can see it, yep. 
So here's a picture of a video inside YouTube, and what you've got here is I'm pointing to a graphic that I made. And this graphic basically is something I brought into my video. It's a little extra magic. You might not have the graphic, but you can put around the graphic what is called an annotation. And nowadays, if you click on this annotation, it will actually jump you right off YouTube onto Google+. So I'm going to do that right now just as an example. So I'm going to click. That opens up a new tab, and here we are. We're right inside my profile on Google+. So that's pretty cool because you were never able to do that in the past. You weren't able to jump off of YouTube onto another website unless you paid them extra money or did other things like that. So that's kind of a neat new development for me and for a lot of people when they're trying to get active on Google+. You can drive traffic right off of a video and say, go ahead and click on that thing right there, you know, point to some place on the screen, and then later make a button that they can click on, and it jumps you right over to Google+, which I think... Question for you, Ronnie. Can you, um, can you link to... Do you have to link to your Google+, Plus profile, or can you link to a Google+, Plus brand page? Right, right now, the only options we've got is to link to your own personal profile. It will not let you go to a page, although the menu says... We've got Google Plus page slash profile. So we would can yeah. guess that in the future we'll be able to connect and go to a page on Google Plus, but right now it's only working to your profile. Because what you'd want to do, obviously, is you would want to create a, a brand page for if you're going to do a specific show, like doing the Billy Wilson show, you'd want to create a brand page for that, and you'd want to encourage people that are watching it on YouTube to... Uh, to circle the that brand page and then you can invite people every week, right? So that's what you want to do. Right. So, cool. Yeah, and there's another little thing that's actually huge in my mind because I'm so much into the video marketing thing. Um, YouTube made an announcement recently that they're going to let us actually link off of a video to our own website, not just to Google+, Plus, which is another YouTube Google property, but actually to go off of a YouTube video and land on your own what's called associated website. When that's yeah. not that's not out yet, you know, when it comes oh, out can't wait. it'll be great, phenomenal, yep. but it's just something that they actually announced to the public, which is pretty cool. So, there you go. That's the, my my latest fun news on this stuff. That's cool. Yeah. And I'm just hoping that the hangout isn't going to crash again. <laughs> I, I, for some reason, Chrome just crashed on me and stopped working, and now I had to open it all up in Firefox, and now it's working, and I don't know why the heck that happened. But hopefully it'll go well, and uh, it was great hearing what Ronnie had to say. And Well, let me throw in one little other thing. If you're having problems, like, for example, what Billy's having right now, and you want someone to try to take a look at it, send information over to me and I'll do my best to run it up the flagpole to the Hangout people and do my best to get you an answer for it. So if you run into issues with Hangouts, cool. let me know. I'll do what I can to help. For some reason, everything's going slow. I have no clue why. But anyways, I'll just free up with that. And so let's... Uh, so, Chris, I, I want to hear more about your show, the so, show, Social Sports and Entertainment show that you're doing on here and how that's sure. been going. Well, you know, uh, my background is uh, network television. I was in uh, sports casting from uh, 1989, which kind of dates me, uh, but I don't need to date myself. I don't have much hair. So, uh, 1989, I started in television. Uh, I was a sportscaster from 89 to 07. And then uh, 2008, I realized, you know what? Uh, TV's great. I love TV. It was awesome. I worked with every brand from Fox, uh, NBC, ABC, CBS, CNN. But I realized, you know what? Uh, the, the, the networks were paying me, so uh, why not the brands pay me? So now, instead of, uh, uh, I do it online. I do Google. I do uh, Facebook. I do YouTube. I do uh, all kinds of campaigns, all video-driven, all social media. And it's all the same game. What I've realized is it doesn't matter. We're all the same. Everybody here right now, what I love about the space is, in the old days, we would have to, uh, Ronnie or uh, Frazier or Claire or even Kimberly, would have to convince these executives in TV to be able to broadcast their message. Well, that's no longer the case. If you're good enough, if you're great enough, and you create great content, 
You can create stuff on your on yourself, and people buy into that, and you can build a brand. So that's what we do. So what I love about this, it gives a free enterprise for everybody. God bless America. I should run for presidency. <laughs> what do you think? I'd, I'd vote for you. But do you see what I'm going with? This is no longer is the uh, uh, the big brands and the big networks and all that in control. Who's in control is really the consumer. What they want to watch and what they care about is what's all that matters. So if you can create stuff that's interesting and compelling, it doesn't matter who backs you up. If the viewers like what you're about, that's all that matters. And that's where I think the game has changed. In the old days, we didn't have that opportunity. So can I throw out a question for Chris? Actually, I already did, so here we go. Chris, if the fans love you, you know, the people are watching your show, how do you eventually get paid to do the work that you do? In other words, how do you monetize what's going on? Great question. I get paid. I've been paid for the last five years. Great question for you. Um, I'm getting an echo back. So, um, Ronnie, how I get paid is I create content where I build up an audience and brands uh, approach me and they say, look, uh, I've got Budweiser as a client. i got Verizon, Michael Stores. Um, but I deal with small stuff too. I deal with uh, local attorneys. I deal with all these folks. What I tell them is, look, um, I'm not going to advertise for you. I'm not going to sell a commercial. I'm not going to be an infomercial. Let's create great content that people are searching for. Let's build it. Let's uh, pay me for creating uh, your story, not my story. Okay? I don't want to be the voice of you. Let me interview you. Uh, they call me Mopra, by the way. Do you know what Mopra is? No, the male version of Oprah. It's all about it's all about getting people comfortable on camera, which is hard to do. Let's just interview people. Let them. Let's pull stuff out of them. Let them be them. Let me not tell your story. Why don't you tell your story? Okay. Let you tell your story, but let's craft it together in a unique and interesting way where it's content. So I get paid for that content and creation. So when you say, how do I get paid for it? I don't get paid for Google+. Plus. I don't get paid for Facebook. I don't want to get paid for that. I'm just utilizing their platform. I could care less what it is. We should all care less. Y'all are all great storytellers. You're great writers. You're great photographers. You're great uh, uh, writers and all that stuff. So utilize that. The, the platform is going to change. Get paid for your talent. Y'all have built up your 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 expertise and your talent, so get paid for that. I know that was long answer for you. I'm sorry. <laughs> so you're doing, no, you're doing more traditional um, advertising methodology. You're just not using one of the other networks to do the broadcast. Are you letting Google do it for you? But I, but I think the, the big thing with this, right, is that it's all about momentum, right? That, that right now we as these sort of small-time, independent creators of content, we're battling the existing forces and the established forces that have all this momentum from the days of television and newspapers and radio and all that kind of stuff. And so we have to stick to our guns. We have to keep producing great content, keep building an audience for the day when all of that momentum fails, when those old kind of creaking business models finally crumble uh, under their own weight with executives taking half million dollar salaries and uh, and then we'll be really well positioned for being able to you know make a living from this and so Frazier, I think you that, nailed it man they don't yeah. have momentum they've already dying I've been a yeah, no, they're all, there's no way. all the time they're they they're they have nothing man their their yeah. their model is dead people don't wait for information anymore okay that model is over People waiting for TV and newspaper, that's done. You know what happens? People are trying to find information. Where are they finding it with us? That's the key. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and I find it I, I find actually interesting that um, right now when uh, you know we talk a lot about Facebook who makes page, uh, you know, you have to pay now to to get if you have a page. Uh, to to make sure that your fans are, are going to actually post. And uh, I find it interesting that we have already moved from you know uh, regular media towards social media, and now there is actually what you were saying, Chris, about that you you create your own content and people who like it will follow it. It means even Facebook somehow is is kind of a traditional social media, and there is space for 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 new way to communicate online, and 
and to get actually uh, um, people who actually follow uh, what you do. Facebook is already almost, you have to be on there, but it's, it's already on almost uh, traditional. Claire, you, you made a great doing? point, is that we, we no longer have to rely on the big boys anymore. I'll give you all a great example, and Bill, you can shut me up and mute me whenever you want. That's cool, because I want everyone else to <laughs> chime in. But I've got a point here, which I don't normally have a point. I have a point tonight. <laughs> Are you ready? My point is this. I used to work with Fox Sports Network for 20 years, okay? I won three Emmys with them. They gave me a 2% raise every year. Awesome. I was like, you know what? That's not worth it, man. So I decided to go on my own. They said, you want to compete with us? I said, I'm going to compete with you, and I'm going to kick your ass. Within one year, you see what's behind me right now? Within one year, we were putting a show together. Now, they were scared. They were like, okay, he's going to go out and do his own thing. He can't do anything. Really? Watch what I did. They competed against me. They had millions of dollars of uh, funding. I had about $200. But I put together a great show. Within one year, I beat their ass on an Emmy. Okay? It's not to brag. Well, maybe it's a little bit. But my point to the story is we were nothing. We were an independent, and we competed against the biggest, the biggest, the biggest and $200 million, $2 billion company against us. But you know what mattered was content. We beat them. We won an Emmy. Why? Because we created great content. So we went against them, and we put a show against them, and we beat them. And what I like about that was is people like you can do the same thing. You don't have to wait for these big agencies and big brands to tell you. You can create great content on your own. So victory to us, small people. Chris, can I ask you uh, a question? Did you, did you feel... Like that, it was time to do it. Like, was there an urgency? Did you feel there was a like a gap opening up for some someone like yourself yes. to come into? Great question. Yeah. Absolutely, I felt there was a, there was an urgency in this time and this opportunity. Um, five years ago, I couldn't have done this. Uh, editing software uh, and TV cameras and all this stuff would have cost me two hundred thousand dollars. I can buy a great camera for two thousand dollars. I can buy editing equipment for $500. In the old days, I would have been toast. I didn't have any work. And then if I get this stuff, where am I going to put it? Now you can put it wherever you want. You can put it in Google. You, you, could be, you can build your own network on YouTube. Um, you can build your own network on Google+. Plus. Um, you don't need these big agencies to do this. Mm -hmm. You don't need the Fox network to broadcast your message. So the urgency... I'll tell you, you, you want to know where my mind really messed up? I took an entrepreneurship course about five years ago, and I said, I can do this. That was a messed up deal. So I decided I'm going to go for it. That was a joke, actually. You can laugh. You can laugh. <laughs> uh, um, so I'm a little sarcastic. So uh, it, it, was, it was one of those deals I thought, you know what? I don't need the big brands anymore. I can do this on my own. So Yeah, uh, that's great. It's, it's just that I... I it's very hands-on sort of stuff now. Anyone can do whatever they want, but you've got to understand the technology, which I struggle with a bit. But um, once, no, you don't. Once you, get you don't have to worry there. about the technology. Go hire someone to do that stuff. You yep. create what you're good at. Don't worry yep. about the technology. Let someone else deal with that. What are you great at, Paul? Uh, uh, songwriting. Then, do, then focus on that. Don't worry about the technology. Let someone else do that. You keep singing, man. That's all you need to do. Come on, cool. come on our show. Come sing, come sing on Billy Wilson's show. Come sing on my show. Come sing on other shows. You get get it out there, and that's all that matters. Cool. Billy, Thanks. you may want to mute me, man. I'm taking over here. Get some. <laughs> yeah. So, I also want to hear from uh, Kimberly. I, I, I've read I'll mute myself. You yeah. also do a, I'll mute myself. a web series. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Can you hear me? Did I unmute? Yeah, we hear you. Yeah. Oh, good. <laughs> um. Yeah, I, I, I find it interesting what Chris was saying because it's the same situation here. I produced two web series, and um, when I, I, I've been asked in the past on interviews, you know, who are your competitors? Are they other mom bloggers? Are they other, you know, parents doing, uh, experts doing parenting? And th my, my answer is my competitors are the, are the studios. They're end them all. They're Fox. They're because I'm doing exactly what they're doing, but I'm doing it on a, a much smaller budget. I'm using social media channels. I'm using all the social media platforms 
where I can, you know, gain, you know, my audience. And um, so it, it's it's interesting. I never thought that my competitors would be the studios, but wow. <laughs> they are. Wow. I suppose yeah. they're looking at it too, aren't they? They're looking at this medium now and thinking, where's this going, obviously. Now, now people are probably wondering where Tibby is, and he's not feeling very well, so I have a goose, so people can screenshot the goose. And I'm normally paying attention to the comments in the event, but right now uh, I had to close everything up. But hopefully there's somebody else watching. But here is a goose. That looks very evil. He does look a bit evil. <laughs> he looks extremely evil. I got hey, a good screenshot for you. It, it's just not the same as Tibby. Like it, usually, as soon as they bring out Tibby, over, it's like, yeah. oh, it's Tibby. There, but, you yeah, know, he, he's just not feeling very well tonight. So I, I just yeah. don't want to be mean to a cat that doesn't feel well and just drag him in here and yeah. hold him up and stuff. There's you, monkey. You, back I, I there. want to see the cat, dude. I want to see there's the cat. There's monkey. My cat's right back there. Yeah, so, so there's the other, and Frazier is a cat too. Billy, I'm sorry, dude. The only reason I came on your show, I want to see the cat tonight. The 25 pound <laughs> cat. He's 25 pounds. Yeah, he, 21, 21. 21. No offense to you. The only reason I came on your show was to talk to the cat. <laughs> I, I, I don't. I, I, I don't think I can get him. But, uh, oh, that's so disappointing. Frazier, do you have your cat around? I, I, I uh, yeah, yeah, I can, I can get it back here. Hold on. So, so this is the cat part of the show. Everybody watching. Saturday. Oh. And, 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 and this is uh, Tibby's replacement. This is his fill-in. There you go. It, it's a uh, similar size. Oh, there, there's Frazier's cat. Right there you go. There. I, I will oh. supply the cat tonight. So this is Nala. She's a uh, Russian blue. What? Oh, she's oh. gorgeous. Oh, yeah. She's a cute cat and absolute murderer. Okay, you're going? All right. She, yeah, she, all right. She, she delivered me two birds today. Oh, my oh. gosh. Yeah, yeah. She's an absolute monster out there. Wow. So, the, a killer. Yeah, total killer. Yeah. Instinct. Yep. Well, she just recognizes right. that I need to be fed. <laughs> Cute. Just showing my cat Billy. I told you I had a cat, so oh, yeah. a cute cat in Vietnam. So wow. that was her. Oh, that's a Siamese Himalayan. It was a Vietnamese cat, but yeah. obviously I had to I had to let her behind. I found a family for her, but yeah. So Aww. right, cute. cute. And you did uh, documentary photography in Vietnam, Claire. Uh, yeah, am I still, yeah, I'm still scared, oh, sorry, sorry, yeah. I, yeah, I'm back, I'm back. <laughs> um, in Vietnam, yes, uh, yes, I, I mainly work for uh, NGOs, doing documentary photography for them, so I was traveling in remote areas, um, uh, mountainous uh, areas mainly, um, and uh, yeah, I was working uh, and I was following the, the project there, and I was also working for a local uh, photography agency. So that was that was really good. Um, and I moved uh, I moved to to Australia uh, three months ago. So I'm doing I'm starting uh, differently to set up a business in portrait photography, and I also share my time in communications because I've, I had a background in communications. So I starting uh, doing both photography and communication in Vietnam, and I'm um, lucky enough to carry on here. Yeah. You can show us some of uh, your photos if you want, and uh, you also have a website you've been working on too. Yeah. Um, so, so, well, I would say that uh, if let me check. Uh, um, in. Um, in Melbourne, uh, recently, what I started to to do, and what I was not doing in in Vietnam and before really too much, it was uh, uh, architecture photography. Is something I'm I'm uh, interested in, and I would like to learn more through that. So there's there's um, uh, someone on, on Google Plus here uh, who was um, in Melbourne who is doing amazing uh, photography, and we're going to uh, hang out together to do some more. So if I switch on 
Yeah, I, sorry, I'm going to share the screen. Screen share over there. Okay. Here we go. So, yeah. Oh, great. Sorry, the link has been <laughs> disabled. <laughs> That's not great. great uh, but great yeah, mainly, mainly, yeah, in Melbourne. So this is Melbourne here, CBD. And, uh, and OK, I'm going to go back there. I like that one. Thank you. Mm. <laughs> so this yeah, is Melbourne, nice. too. So basically, what, I, yeah, what, I, what I've started doing is just uh, um, because I, uh, Sorry, what I was explaining to Billy the other day um, is that uh, in Vietnam I had a total different relationship with the people and I love shooting people and switching from a, a, a culture uh, in Asia where I was, I mean, that's totally different. I need to uh, learn again how to interact uh, with people because it's, it's just um, another level here and uh, I, I need to take the time to appropriate the city to uh, get the, the feeling back and also uh, I also try to to get the most uh, from uh, from the city and this is architecture what I didn't I, what I couldn't do in Vietnam so when I came here on my way I stopped in Hong Kong and got a wide lens and and I'm starting I'm starting shooting uh, the what city. Do you and, what do you uh, focus on? You focus on buildings or people or emotion or what is your I love photography. What do you focus on? Uh, mainly um, my thing is people so I'm going to, to show you some of my uh, posts. Um, sorry I didn't. Um, so uh, yeah, an album I would like to show you for example. Well, what are you, what are you passionate yes. about? You like You like photos of people more? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's totally people, emotions. I mean, to uh, I try, you know, to to get uh, the well. It's it's kind of weird to say that, but the yeah, the soul of people trying to to see uh, beyond faces, you know. Okay. Um, so if uh, if I show you uh, one of the album uh, that I really like from from Vietnam about people is. Um, sorry, sorry, sorry about that. Um, Streets of Hanoi, that one. So also have this to hold up too. Sorry? And, uh, the name of Halloween. <laughs> so, here, screen share. Screen share. Let me. That all right. And we okay. See it. Can you see it? Yeah, we see everything. Yeah, yep. Yep. Oh, nice. So, <laughs> so that, yeah, that's that. That was the photo from Hanoi, you know, and. Um, I'm into, I love daily life, shooting daily life, and that was something very, well, I would say Vietnam is, uh, is amazing, uh, very inspiring for, for photography, uh, but um, what I would say, it's, it's, it's a total different relation I had with people there and the city in general. Let's see. Um, it, sounds, it looks like you like more natural stuff, not stage stuff. Yeah, no, definitely. Daily life is. I like, I, I like you know, to, to, I, I like stepping back, and and get the feeling, taking my time with people to catch, you know, to wait and 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 get the perfect moment. So I, I do that also with uh, kids photography. So I I do some some portraits, That's cool. and uh, I will I will get some very natural and casual. Uh, stuff. I will. I will compose. I will take time to compose my images. Well, this is uh, more. But I will you wait. Like, you know. So you like black and white medium too? Like, is this? Yeah, a lot. Yeah. yeah. A lot of photographers do. I really like it. I'm not a photographer, but there's something about there's something about just the light and sh and dark and the incredible. Yeah, my father yeah, sure. is a photographer, and he's only black and white. 
I'm not. I'm not only. I would like also the color stuff. But, um, Why is that? Do you think the black and white is it Ansel Adams inspired this generation, or what's what's the the deal between? I mean, because earlier on when it was just black and white and the color came out, question. everyone was like, "Great color." Well, but, I mean, well, for I my, I, well, for my father, it was really about uh, what you could do in the darkroom. So, you know, if you're a if you're a photographer and you're doing black and white, then you can have your own darkroom set up, and you could actually, you know, do your film and actually develop your own photos, and then you can play around with the developer and with the, you know, and so you could actually make the photos exactly how you want them to look. And so, but with color photographs, you pretty much had to send them off to the lab to get them done mm. for you. So. That was one of the main reasons why why my dad stuck with with black and white for as long as he did. He's now starting to switch into digital, but you know he's got it such a beautiful. He's got a Leica, and he's got just this beautiful camera that he doesn't want to give up for a <laughs> you know crappy digital camera comparatively. So he doesn't want to spend five grand on a on a new Leica digital purist. <laughs> Claire, you're, yeah. you're the Claire. You're the professional. I'm not on this. Tell me if I, I don't know. This is my perspective on black and white compared to color. Why I mm -hmm. think a photographer, I love it, or or visually, I like it. Is uh, color when you see color, eh, it's pretty easy. Beautiful colors, eh? You know, anybody can shoot that. But as a photographer, it's black and white. You've really got to be creative and seeing some depth into it. You got to see some emotion into it. You got to see something that's unique. And if it's black and white, it's real. Your your eyes get more captured into what you're filming or what you're shooting. Is that a fair is that a fair assessment? Well, I don't know if it's fair assessment. I, I mean, uh, you can prefer black and white photography over color, you know. Uh, but um, I think uh, shooting in color can be very very difficult actually, um, uh, because you need you need to find the the you know the, the nice balance uh, between tones and stuff like this. This is both. This is about composition and this is about the balance of colors and there's many many things. I, I do love photography for black and white photography for what you just said. It's like it's it's not you don't focus the subject by colors, but you can focus your attention about something else. So you will play with the contrast. Uh, in black and white with the uh, texture because you you are you, you won't focus on colors so you can actually focus on something else so I think you can do both depending on what what you want to what you want to show um, but um, but um, I, I I really really do like black and white photography why do you like it uh, okay I told you why I liked it why do you like it uh, I think there's something a bit cinematic for me about it. It reminds me, you know, all, all movies, and and I like the, um, yeah, maybe maybe old photography that was always always you know black and white, and and there is this this, uh, um, I don't know, for me there's an intimacy uh, in black and white photography, some kind of, uh, yeah, um, kind of nostalgia, emotion that. Uh, there's less for me that I cannot find in, in color photography. That's yeah. Um, I had an observation um, uh, when we, when you're showing the the photographs that I noticed that one particular stood out to me was the the guy on the motorbike, the little, mm -hmm. and his face. Although everything's in motion, his face seems to be somewhere else. It's like he's, to me, that it sort of it just had this. Um, he was somewhere, somewhere else. He was going through his business, but it just stood out. So that's that's what it does. When I when I look at some uh, photography, um, it's sometimes just there's there's this something uh, you capture a, a, an expression or a moment. Really, uh, really, uh, you just you just get it in that moment, and mm -hmm. uh, it's it's captured forever. So, yeah, I, I like that one. Thank you. <laughs> And uh, Fraser, I also wanted to hear a bit about uh, stuff that you do on here. Like you're like the astronomy man of Google Plus, pretty well. Like when people think astronomy, they think of Fraser Crane, Fr uh, Kane. And uh, you're Canadian, Billy. No, Come Fraser, on, the, Fraser the Canadian, Kane, Canadian yeah. pronunciation, Billy. Fraser. Fraser. Yeah, we're Canadian. Fraser. It's all right. I give people a hard okay. time. <laughs> I, Fraser Crane, I know, I know, Fraser Crane. I had the name first, okay? I was born before the show started up. 
So tell us about the stars. Oh, sure. Razor. Yeah, okay, right. So, right, of course. <laughs> so the, the thing that we're doing that's kind of interesting is that we're, we've been uh, connecting... Uh, every Sunday night, we connect all of a bunch of telescopes live into a, a Google Plus Hangout and do a live sort of view of the night sky. And we have about you know five, six telescopes all at the same time. Some are some are good for the planet. Some are good for the moon. Others are deep sky telescopes. And then we have a bunch of PhD astronomers on at the same time and sort of explain everything it is that we're that we're looking at all at the same time. And uh, we've been doing that since November, so like almost a year now, actually. And uh, and it's it's a really good time, and it's quite it's quite neat to see um, how how knowledgeable people are, and how sort of possible it is to bring a view of the night sky to people who are maybe living in in light polluted cities, and uh, uh, they don't have the tech the gear to go and sort of see the stuff with their own eyeballs, and so we try and bring it to them. So, yeah. I caught, I caught something of, of that uh, you guys did was the eclipse. I watched that. That was really yeah. We did a couple of special events. Yeah, we did. We did the uh, there was a there was a eclipse in uh, in the U.S. that we did a yep. live stream of the eclipse, and so we had a whole bunch of telescopes set up sort of along the eclipse path, and then people were live streaming their view of the eclipse, and then we were talking about it, and then we also did um, a live view of the uh, of the Venus transit. And so that was the sort of, the, you know, this happens every twice every 108 years. And so that was about a six-hour project. And in that, we had, uh, we, had li we had people live on uh, sort of, again, sort of across uh, sort of the area that the transit was happening. And we were broadcasting a live view of it, different kinds of telescopes. It was pretty cool. And then the big thing that we did was we did uh, live coverage of the Curiosity landing when uh, Curiosity rover hit landed on Mars. Yeah, so we were able to bring in a live stream view of the uh, of the NASA feed, and then at the same time we sort of encapsulated that in our own coverage. And so we had a whole bunch of uh, NASA scientists and you know planetary astronomers and things like that all at the same time. Uh, helping us understand sort of what was going on and give us a, a sort of play-by-play. -play. It was really great. We had two people actually live on site at NASA, JPL, uh, reporting on the scene, you know, within the, you know, within the sort of press area. And it was pretty cool, actually. We actually got a shout-out from NASA during the press conference for, for what we were doing. So uh, it's really fun to, uh, to sort of push the, the limits. I mean, having done this, I really feel like there's now no technical reason why you can't do as good coverage on Google Plus in a Hangout environment as any news environment, any news broadcast out there. I mean, it's it's really just comes down to, you know, how organized you are and how well you can actually, you know, do the broadcast. So it's a pretty exciting time. Yeah. Amen to that, dude. Yeah. Look at this, the shirt, the tie. He's, he's going for the election. <laughs> well, uh, Kim was freaking me out. She said, uh, "I'm I'm sleeping. I'm I'm falling down too low. I wish people would dress up." So here you go. That's just for Kim. I've got my yeah. Steve Steve Jobs look. What do you think about that? Is that okay, Kim? Is that better for you? <laughs> you need me a bit higher. Oh, okay, I am. Oh, Kim said that I need to be a little bit higher, but I'm oh, actually on a. Uh, I'm uh, I'm on my standing desk. So. So I tonight, I don't think we should hear you, Kimberly. My opinion is, um, I agree with all of you. <laughs> hey, look, Fraser. I thought you were on a treadmill. I, I literally, you, you look like you were on a treadmill. No, I'm just, I'm standing. Okay, <laughs> so. so that's no. I like to arrange people on my show every Wednesday when we no, go live. We're, we're on all, Google. We're all adjusting just for your view. <laughs> just for you, yeah. It's no. all just for you, Kim. No, Everybody's yeah. Changing their look. We're uh, wearing ties and. And stuff just for you. Yes, because but, yeah. it, it's a, but it's a good point, right? I mean, for all the people who are quite used to doing these Google Plus Hangouts, especially if you're the producer director of these, you know, there's so much work that actually goes into it in getting every person to kind of learn how to handle echo control and mic control and yeah. and how to how to sort of look into the camera and and when you actually see it, it all looks very casual. But the reality is that everybody's quite well practiced and and right. kind of knows their role, and it all works out quite well. Right. And uh, yeah, and often you know, half an hour before we do our broadcast, I'm like, echo, echo. Can I hear echo? Oh, you need to mute. It's, mm -hmm. Yeah. Right, right. So, well, you all look great. <laughs> I, I changed this for you, Kim. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so impressed. So. <laughs> Fraser, I I want to say I want to I want to 
I was getting dressed up just for Kim, but I want to uh, uh, um, I want to appreciate what you just said. Um, I like what you said. It's like uh, everybody can be their own network. Everybody doesn't have to rely on the big broadcast. I mean, I can do great stuff, but I don't want to do all that great stuff. We don't need to anymore. We can do and we can interact in an instantaneous way. To me, the old school the old school way was I would broadcast to somebody and it'd be over. Now we can interact and we can get feedback while we're talking, while we're doing stuff. I think that's more. I think that's better. I don't know. That's my. Well, I, I mean, I guess the point is, is that you can just kind of do whatever you want, and you know, the well, opportunity I'm, I'm, here is for us to is for us to experiment and for us to try different things and see what works and what doesn't work. I mean, at this point, I've probably organized I don't know a hundred live hangouts. So. You get really good. You just get tons of practice, and you get a chance to sort of learn all the little nuances of this. And you can experiment. You know, every week I try to sort of fine tune and make things a little bit better. And um, but I mean, I was thinking, you know, we could do, you know, Google Plus. We could do like a twenty-four hour news network, right? <laughs> Where we had people right. around the world reporting That's on amazing. stories. You know, and I think it would be we could we could come up with a news network that would be as interesting, I think, as. As we'll beat the better, butt, better, man. Better, I just better, proved to you, man. Better, you know, we can beat them. We can beat them. We're better. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. We're stronger. We're with, more uh, with intelligent. Google Plus, we can have access to people around the world who can help report on stories that are breaking in, in their areas of expertise. So I think there's a, you know, again, uh, there's a few technical hurdles that see, still need to come out, some better bandwidth, some better high quality, that kind of thing. But, uh, but yeah, it's pretty exciting. It. Just dive into it. Yeah, no, no, absolutely. You need to learn. You need to learn the methods and the you know the technical chops and all that other stuff is going to show up. And so I wouldn't use whatever the problems are right now as any reason to stop you. Everyone should get rolling right now and learn this as quickly yeah. as they can. That I, I think I I do disagree a bit with with you, Chris. That you do, you know, you do need disagree. to kind of take go, on some. Go for it. Well, you, I, you know, you're saying well, let somebody else handle the technical stuff, but I find that you know. The technical parts right now are part of the package, and as you learn the technology, you then understand the limitations of it, and there's a lot of value to... I don't to... want to deal with it. I'm saying you can deal with it. I don't want to yeah. deal with it. Well, yeah, Fraser, know. Fraser, I'm going to disagree with you since we do that well. Um, yeah, we do I'm going to well. say you would hire someone like me or someone else to be a producer. I could be behind the scenes doing all the technical mm -hmm. stuff, and then the talent could be just being the creative right. person. Yeah. So no, I agree. I, agree. I, don't agree. I just I don't think agree. there's money for it yet. One That's second. all. I just posted mm -hmm. something on here. That was me in 1989, how pathetic I was. I'm really great on TV now. You want to see how crappy I was? Play that thing. It was my first TV show of all time. <laughs> I should have never been on there. It was at 1 a.m. And, sh and you know what? This is proof you will never suck as bad as I sucked. I promise. <laughs> but I you might want do. to put that link in the uh, event so other people can yeah. watch. Let me just tell you something right now. I pl I show this to people to build up their confidence. They're like, I can't do what you do. I said, no, you can't because i got 25 years' experience. But let me show you my first episode ever. You are better than me right now because my well, thing – Well, but I just don't want people to not try horrible. and do it because they can't horrible. afford, no. right, because they can't you afford want, somebody. You want That's some all. confidence? Play this thing. I give this to anybody that has low self-esteem, play this thing because I was horrible. <laughs> yeah. The well, cure. Yeah, Fraser. You know, I I, I I agree with you because I I think that at different levels we have to learn um, exactly what 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 all, all right. the mechanic what all the mechanics are of what we're doing, and then once we understand it all and how much money it's going to take to take it to another level, then we need to hire producers yes. and our sound people and. You know, so I understand because even with me, I syndicate my own show. I don't, I don't even hire out in, in, in any marketing or PR. I do it all because I want to know, you know, how much are my shows going for? What am I paying? But down the road, as I shop them out to other people, they can do it. But yeah. I had to learn everything myself at first. So I agree with you so that when I'm negotiating with someone else, I know exactly what they're talking about. I just don't want people to feel like they can't get going if they need to have money. Like, you don't need money, just do it. Absolutely, Frazier. I know Billy wants to play music, but we're on a roll. Billy, music and wait, man. This is the best conversation. <laughs> this is supposed to be fired up, man. We're an hour long show. Let's go. And we need to have Paul play. So, yeah. ooh, the hand came up. Paul. <laughs> go, Paul. Or else ooh. the evil goose will get us. Oh, evil goose. Okay. Evil goose. I'm going to go into studio mode, I guess.
Billy, Billy's man, we were on a roll, yeah, man. Yeah, and you want the rest of us to mute, right, so that we don't yeah. get in, involved here. Yeah. Billy, we were on a roll, man. Ooh, we could talk as soon okay. as we're done. You play all Come day. Come on, go, Paul. Okay, here we go. Go for it. Okay, this is an original song that people seem to like on here, and I've played, I've got two or three that I do that, people are familiar with so this one's called Jeff's on away studio. away studio mode on right yep okay good just make, make... okay we ready <laughs> Stay far away from my life. Yeah, I don't want to see it. away, away. Take my blues and stay far away. How many times have I looked down, found that I've been dreaming? I was just dreaming How many times have I looked down Said, hey, that dream's for me I'm free Away, away, yeah Take my blues and stay Far away from my life My eyes, yeah Down and lonely, yeah, I don't want to be Down and lonely, just take them blues away Take them away, away Take my blues and stay My blue, take them away. Take my blue. Take my blues away. There you go, dude. Nice work, man. That was pretty good. Awesome. Yeah, really cool. That's beautiful. Nice awesome work, dude. dude. Nice. Audio, okay? Yeah. Oh yeah, it was great. It was yeah, studio sounds, mode oh, sounds that's great. great. That's, yeah, it sounded great. <laughs> Good blues, yeah. And uh, do you want me to do another one, Billy? You got time? Yes, or? yes, yes. We we still have ten minutes. Oh, cool. This is a, a song about my hometown here in Brisbane. Uh, it's, uh, a, it's called Story Bridge, uh, Words Fall. As I cross that story bridge I was thinking We talked about a great big moon up there Not so long ago Yeah, 
I still remember good things like that and those bitter blues they cannot linger no they cannot linger story bridge you gave me such a brilliant time did you know I was fading my but the way I feel out here tonight it's like my mood all those colored lights they shine all over that Brisbane water Brisbane City Words fall Words fall To my walking step As I go walking Across that story bridge Yeah, I go and walking Played in that pub over there Yeah, you know the one around the corner We used to pack them in so carefully Those cold winter nights with the firelights burning brightly I still remember good things like that And those bits of blue they cannot linger No, they cannot linger Story bridge I'm walking over Story bridge Yes, I'm walking over Awesome. Thank wow. you. Is that a bridge in Brisbane, the Story Bridge? Or? Yeah, it's, um, it's almost identical to the Sydney Harbour Bridge. I think it might be a bit shorter. I think you did a two for one, but the uh, Sydney Harbour Bridge gets a lot more um, uh, attention. But um, Brisbane doesn't have a lot of. Um, oh, God, Billy left. The anchor left. Ooh. The host of the show left. I have good news. I, I got like Tibby. Oh, Tibby oh, has, has, a, has come. Tibby has. Yes. Poor Tibby. Come on, Tibby. I'll, I'll gently pick did, him up. Did you wake Tib up? No, he, he, he demanded into the room. And you know how cats are when they tell you, here he is, everybody. Aww, everybody, Tibber. you can screenshot Tibby and post him to the room. Yay. I should do a Tibby oh. song. Oh, he's so cute, Tibby. He is. Paul, good job singing, man. Nice to see you again. Paul, good job singing, man. And we still have time for another song. I, I better put him down before he dies or kills Aww. me or something. B Billy, where are, you, where are you based again? I, I uh, had some problems. Sault Marie, Ontario, Canada. Okay. Gosh, we're all over the country here. And uh, well, on different continents as well. Yeah, that's amazing. Amazing. And it's crystal clear. <laughs> and, and Paul, uh, we can have another song. I can? Cool. Yeah. All right. What will I do? <laughs> This song is a bit reflective. Um, it's called In the Moment. I 
picking up pieces from yesterday Man, I don't see much at all today Just trying to find reason There's no reason that I know Just trying to make sense of it all The moment Looking all around me I'm standing on this ground well, Who really knows what's been before me Scientific explanations are Yeah, they turn my head around Sometimes I feel just like a no star flying You think it would be easy just to be You think it would be easy just to be In the moment, right now That tomorrow never knows In the moment, right now And I'm where'd so go, happy go? Tibby came by. Okay, come here. Okay, back in voice. Good job. Yep. Thank and you. It is about an hour, so it is about time to end the show, and I'd like to thank all of you guys for coming. And amazingly, Tibby also mm -hmm. showed up. I didn't think he was going to come by. It's like it's like you knew it's the last few minutes of the show. He demands in, and then I... <laughs> Show them. And uh, next week, uh, I, I have a photographer and community builder, Ron Clifford, and some other photographers and a writer and uh, a guy who does some uh, surfing stuff for, uh, like he does uh, pictures and that. So it's going to be a pretty interesting show. And I'll see everybody next week. And thank you, everyone, for watching. Sounds Thanks good. for having us. Peace.